And it's gotta be Settlement Project That's the only thing that's soothing my soul Turn on the TV to Power Rangers Welcome ladies and gentlemen To yet another episode of Color Commentary Where we give you views From a different side I've got my weapon here Fully loaded and you can see with a black guy here carrying a gun this big, we must be talking about the movie Ken. Uh, an incredible movie that made a whopping $3 million in four days. $3 million in four days. <laughs> We're just going to get into it because I don't have a whole lot to say. I'm going to go ahead and bring on my brother here so he can make sure that he's ready because he's not wearing glasses or anything like that just so he knows. I'm about to call on him, but uh, me and my brother are about to do this show here. What's going on, Mr. Breller Chuck Taylor? What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, guys? But uh, yeah, I'm here, you know, just got, got finished taking a look at this movie, uh, I'm ready to jump into it, but I'm here with KFH Party Easy, um, doing parties of all kinds, so got some, definitely got some great things coming up, so be on the lookout for that. All right, all right. Oh, by the way, and I forgot to mention that, of course, I'm Rashad with Block Band Music and Publishing, a company that sells music and instruments to marching bands all across the nation. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this, my brother. Uh, so anyway, with this movie... Oh, wait a second. What, what the heck is that? Oh, hold up. Hold up. Somebody, somebody, they must be trying to get my weapon. Let me get, just get rid of this weapon. That would probably have been the best idea is just to get rid of this weapon and then nobody can be after me. Yes, sir. What is it that you want? You know who it is. It's your boy, Danny J. Quick. And yes, I'm coming after the weapons. Let's see, I got my little, uh, my, one of my ace blade goggles and uh, my, my mask to cover up my identity. If I took off my mask, then you would see who I was. And you might actually have made some money on this film. But <laughs> <laughs> my face is covered up and nobody knew that I was in the movie. We're not going to make any money. So, hey, there, there probably won't be a Ken 2. But uh, if, if I tell you, I'll tell you one thing. If I get uh, Michael B. Jordan to play Ace Blade, you're going to know about it. That's, that's one thing people are going to know. Right. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and get into it. Since you're the one that's talking there, sir, uh, tell me what is it that you liked about this movie, or how did this movie win? Um, I think it, this movie could have really been good. It could have been really great. They they did a really good job. Um, the movie was called Ken, and it was really about families. You know, it wasn't presented as a family movie. It was presented as a sci-fi. Um, you know, sci-fi chase movie. Um, this this little black kid finds this this uh, alien weapon, and there are people after him. But it was really a movie about family. The, the bad guy, um, came, James Franco, and his team. He was distraught that his brother was killed. Um, uh, the main actor, the main character, the kid. I don't even know what his name was. Uh, <laughs> Elijah, he, uh, he, um, you know, he was, his entire story was about not having, you know, being an orphan and being adopted by this family. And then his new father died and his brother getting, you know, out of jail. So, you know, there's a lot of family dynamics going on there. Um, even the young lady that they picked up, she had issues with family. And then you found out that the big twist was he you know, has a special family somewhere else who, hit him on this planet, spoiler alert, uh, mm -hmm. to hide him because of a war. Mm -hmm. And um, the the movie... You've already, you already spoiled everything in the first... <laughs> in your <laughs> intro. <so. laughs> Talk about some spoiler alert. <laughs> it, it, like I said, it could have been good. The movie could have really been good. Um, but it, it just had a, a, really, a really slow start. I think they did a good job um, establishing the characters. The young the young man who played Elijah was a was a really good actor for for it being my first time ever seeing him in anything. He was really engaging. Uh, the scene where he found out that his father had died when they did the slow motion pan when he saw it on the news thing and he took the phone down. He bumps into the girl 
and you know doesn't even notice it i mean you know uh that was really impactful you know i think he did a really good job james franco as the villain this dude was just <laughs> this dude was just crazy he, when he went in there into the uh into the gas station was like can i use your bathroom that <laughs> yes was, that was amazing <laughs> he was like oh it's only for employees he was like oh really well i'm just gonna <laughs> he put the gun down on the on the table and just whipped it out right there. I would have been like, "Okay, bro. Okay, go to. It's right here. Go to the bathroom. Right. It's in the, you don't have to be in front in in front of the in the front door. Calm down. Wait, but remember, he said said I, I can't do that if you're gonna be sitting there looking at me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, man, the man gonna turn his back. If he would have said that to me, I'd be like, "Okay, I understand. You really gotta go. You, I'll make a special exception for you. You can go to the bathroom. Don't right." Worry. So uh, they they did a really good job. I really wish that they would have marketed the movie better, um, and you know didn't hide the fact that Michael B. Jordan was in it because he's probably the biggest star right now who's in the movie. Um, what's the what was the dad's? Uh, was it Dennis Quaid who played yeah, his father? Dennis Quaid. Mm-hmm. Dennis Quaid. Um, you know he did good for his five minutes that he was in the movie. Um, <laughs> It was it was it was really well done. The chemistry was all there. The the moments with the with the brother teaching the um the big brother teaching the little brother how to do the how to drive that was really uh, really well done. It, I really felt like you know they were bonding for the first time. It ha- it has a lot of potential. I wish I wish uh, we I hope we do get to see a Ken too because I'm um I'm intrigued by it. But there there's gonna be more bad than good. Uh, what, what do you got to say about it, Chuck? <laughs> oh, is it my turn? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> our, our timer, our timer set. Okay. Uh, okay. So, how did this movie win? Um, I think, I guess, all on, once you kind of get into the story, it does seem to, you know, the actor, the actors, uh, work well together. Everybody's believable. Um. There are some moments in there. We'll get that in the next segment, but uh, they kind of like kind of throw you off a little bit, or I guess they maybe sped up a little bit. But all in all, the movie seems to work well. I was able to watch it, stay intrigued, um, kind of see the different family problems. Um, so definitely like having that little sci-fi, I guess uh, a little sci-fi situation. It's not really the main point in the movie. You know, the gun is cool, but like the main point is seeing you know these different types of people interact and grow and you know you know be a family and you know seeing from one side um i guess you know the troubled son you know basically feeling like he's an outsider to his family and seeing the adopted adopted son you know basically he kind of resents him a little bit like well he kind of you know took my place and you know seeing the dad's and the son's relationship kind of like oh wow there's a lot of deep crap going in there what's going on with this family there's a lot of drama and you can mm. definitely see it was a lot of tension between a lot of the characters. And basically, you know, a lot of them just need to, you know, say, you know, I'm sorry, I love you, and, you know, have some conversations. But, you know, a lot of us as humans don't have conversations. We just get mad and get quiet and, and remove ourselves from the situation and never really try to fix it. So that's kind of what it, it taught me throughout the movie. Like, if we don't fix issues, you know, with your family, it can result in aliens coming to try to take your your weapons. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nah, it, 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 it could it has some type of uh, you know, it's going to damage you as a person, you know, physically and mentally, you know, having all that stress and not being able to, you know, work it out. That's kind of what I got out of the movie. So, if that's what it was trying to do, that's what I got. Um I like having the, you know, the special effects with the guns and, you know, some of the uh some of the fighting scenes, um, seeing uh, what was the guy, the uh, Green Goblin's name? What's his name? The Green James Guy. Frank- what did you say? James Franco. James Franco. He he played he played another movie when he was like a gangster, like a like a he would like make like a drug dealer or something. Mm-hmm. And he did y'all see that one? I forgot what it was called. But he was basically yeah. like a big time. Well, he was like a drug dealer in like some slum village type of town. But his, okay. his he even he, he basically 
tapped into that when he was in this movie. I was like, okay, yeah, that's the same guy I saw in the other movie. I forget the name mm-hmm. of it. Well, somebody in the comments listed below if you know. But um, yeah, he, he did a good job. You know, I, I really like him in those roles when he's kind of that hardcore, you know, uh, you know, kind of no mercy guy. I've seen him in that role a couple times lately. Um, but I think the plots, the plot was good. Uh, I think the story, um, you know, was pretty well rounded. Um, I wish, like you said, I wish they would have marketed it a little better. So you at least would have kind of known what to expect. And especially Michael B. Jordan is going to be in the movie, which had me going, oh, Chuck, this movie is awesome now. It's cause that's right. what I, do. <laughs> I love him in almost every movie I've seen him in. So, uh, so big ups to, uh, to, uh, Michael B. Killmonger. Rest in peace. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think that was uh, all I really liked about the movie, I guess. You know, that was the point I got from it. So my time is inching away. So what about you, Rashad? <laughs> is that your king? Is this your king? <laughs> <laughs> um, everything I liked about this movie pretty much was at the very end. Uh, other than the fact I liked the technology. Like, I thought the gun was pretty awesome. I mean, seeing people get blown away and them just dissipating. <laughs> I was just, wow, like, that's amazing. <laughs> it was like Thanos in a gun. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> two things I liked about the end was the setup for the sequel. Like, the ending really, just like you said, Charlie, the ending really takes this movie in and pushes it up a notch. Because it's kind of like sitting here. For most of the movie and you get to the end you're like oh like wow like oh that's that's pretty interesting like i do want to see how this uh how this works out and what happens in, in the future um you know to make it seem like hey he's destined for something in the future um he's part of a special race you know the second movie might be a whole lot more interesting it seems like particularly again if michael b jordan is going to be in it and they can actually reveal that i mean it's just a matter of did this movie do well enough to actually warrant a sequel I don't know that it did, and it's unfortunate because I re- really would like to see the sequel to this movie. Um, the second thing was just Michael B. Jordan being in there. Um, him being one of the, the bikers, I thought was such a great idea as far as casting was concerned. First of all, you're assuming the whole time that they're bad guys and this imminent threat that's coming, and then he shows up and reveals himself like, oh, and he's a good guy. Like, that's awesome. And then um, the casting again because Michael B. Jordan is hot right now. And, um, you know, him playing another, uh, a completely different role in a sci-fi setting, I thought was really good. You know, see him be a nice, cool guy as opposed to, you know, Kill- Killmonger, you know, kill- having his girlfriend killed and all this type of stuff. Um, also, the idea of a of a black man being underneath the mask, I thought, was perfect. You know, for him to say, you know, we're just like you. And then pull up the mask and actually see that it's actually somebody that looks like him. I thought was more impactful. I think it would have it meant something to him um, to see that. And I, for me, as a black man myself, it just it just made the whole thing sink together. Like man, like okay, like I feel you. Like I'm here for you, buddy. You know. Plus the uh, plus with everything that's going on right now. You know, with um, young black men are getting killed. You know, they're having. Things that don't even look like guns and they're getting killed. And here's this young man, a young black man or boy with a huge weapon. And instead of uh, the cops, you know, showing up and killing him, Michael B. Jordan shows up and he talks him down and rescues him. I just thought it was such a beautiful scene and and so different than what we're seeing right now. And also, just to let you guys know, uh, Michael B. Jordan was actually executive producer for this as well. So. And maybe maybe he cut him a break as far as how much he had to pay. Uh, last thing, I did like James Franco. Um, when I first saw him show up, I was like, oh, I know how he's going to play this. It's going to be kind of silly. Cause I, I, I think I saw him in that movie where they take on uh, Kim Jong-il. That was such a big deal, like a couple years back. So it's like, mm-hmm. he's going to be silly when he plays this role. But then as soon as he started playing, I was like, oh, like, wow, like, he's serious. Like, he's not playing around. So I really thought James Franco did a great job in his role. All right. So now let's go ahead and recharge our weapons here. It's too heavy to just pick up. <laughs> I got the little one. And ones. let's get into this. Uh, Mr. Danny, how did this movie fail? Um, <laughs> trying, to trying to find a weapon to use. I only got this tripod, but uh, it failed. <laughs> it just looks like a tripod. Yeah. Uh, 
It failed in, in multiple ways. Uh, it was very, very slow. The movie was extremely slow. Um, it failed in, every, in almost every stage. It failed in the marketing. It failed in, I mean, the, the, the story was just not impactful enough to hold me. Um, if, if I wasn't reviewing it, I probably would not have um, gotten a ticket, first of all, because the, market, the movie wasn't marketed well. Besides there being, being a little black kid in it, um, nothing about the marketing made me want to see it. Like it look, the, the it looks nice. The graphic design is done well, but it doesn't tell me anything about the movie, and it's misleading. Um, the the title of the movie is Ken, so you think it's a it'll be about you know bloodlines or family or something like that, sure. But everything that you saw in the movie says that this is a sci-fi. Uh, sci-fi chase movie, a sci-fi action movie, and it just wasn't that. Um, there was not a lot of sci in it, and not a lot of fi in it. You know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> besides the the graphics that came along with the gun, and then that stuff at the very end with the uh, you know them going back to their planet and her looking for a doorway or whatever, and, and then and using the time off. stone. Yeah, using the <laughs> using the time stone uh, in that grenade. Um, there wasn't much science fiction in it. Um, so I just think that they they failed um, to, they missed the opportunity because the film actually was a decent film. You just wouldn't know that before you went into it. And there was nothing about it that would make you want to go see it. And the biggest thing that they had going for them was that Michael B. Jordan executive produced it and he was in it. And they didn't use that. That's, it just doesn't make any sense to not use either one of those things. You could say Michael Jordan executive produced it without giving away that he's in the movie. You can, uh-huh. you know, have him have him do press for the movie without him saying that he's in it. He doesn't have to say it. He can just be saying, "Oh, I executive produced this movie. I want y'all to go see it." And people would have people would have gone to see it because he's right. one of the biggest stars in the world right now. So, made ten million dollars. Right, and they could have made ten million dollars instead of three, and we might have got a Ken too. I actually really would like to see the second movie because everything in the last ten minutes hit for me. Them slowing down mm-hmm. time, every everything from um, your boy James Franco walking up with the gun to him looking at the thing on his the the uh, thing on his hand at the end got me, and mm-hmm. but it just wasn't enough. Uh, I mean, they didn't they didn't put any of that stuff. And you can't put any of that stuff in the marketing, but it, it was just a little too late. It was a little too late. So, I mean, hopefully we will get a Ken too, but I doubt it. Michael B. Jordan's going to have to pay for it out of his own money. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, don't, don't make it. Don't make it for him. He just going to be in it. It'll be some. It'll be some. He was on HBO. He had an HBO mm-hmm. movie that was, to me, was boring, but, you know. Mm-hmm about burning books and stuff so i didn't really care for that much it was okay but you know people liked it mm-hmm. but uh yes, so. what do you think there sir how did this movie fail uh i would say it definitely was slow um it kind of it was misleading so i'll go with those points with tori like being misled like okay what's going on like it does show you the gun and the weapon right at the beginning of the movie so you kind of think mm-hmm. it's like okay it's going to kind of you know kind of film I me mean, go around that but it's kind of like that's kind of like in the background it's like yeah i got this gun that's crazy but you know i really was gonna have these long boring quiet conversations with you know my dad and then like nobody really talks on the scenes a lot of times they just look at each other a lot so by like mm-hmm. uh, by like no 15 20 minutes in, you're like okay is somebody to have a conversation and stop just having the slow music you know, I felt like uh, Batman v Superman a little bit with just the stares and the and the music and the tense moments. Like, mm. why are we looking at each other? Like, say something, get to the point, speed it up a little bit. We don't need this. Mm-hmm. And the dad and I'm just gonna go and say, Dad was stupid. I'm sorry, he was stupid. Ain't yes. no person acting that dumb when people got guns stealing from him. I'm like, did you think that they were like little kids and that he was just gonna give them a good talking to? I'm like, <laughs> he just told you they're going to kill us. It's like, right. 
I, I don't understand. I, I guess like that's like we got to kill this guy off somehow. He's just gonna be he gonna be that. He basically uh, reminded me of Superman's dad. You remember when he went to go uh, go rescue the dog? Like this dog got four legs. Go run, run away from the tornado. I'm not going over there and just stand there right. and get hit by a thing tornado. Like that's the type of logic <laughs> they just use to kill him off, and then use like his words. At the end, to kind of make it like, okay, yeah, my dad told me to be the better man type of thing. Yeah, your dad is dead. <laughs> Think about that. He's dead. <laughs> because he wouldn't walk out the room. Or at least react. I mean, you got a stick in your hand like they don't have guns. <laughs> right. <laughs> I didn't get that. Like, that just kind of messed me up for the whole movie. Before, well, at least half of it. Mm -hmm. And then kind of just seeing the son... I, mean, I guess he was trying to stay cool the whole time, so they let you see like little moments of him, like okay, well, you know, he's he's upset, but he's just trying to hide it and stuff. So seeing that, I mean, I I, I made it work a little bit, but just kind of like your dad just died in front of you, like yeah, I, I don't know, I I thought you would be a little bit more emotional, even though y'all have a good relationship, like your dad just died, and uh, right. like some of the characters that they picked up along the way, like the girl from the strip joint, like she was cool, but I was like, wow, how did this happen, like? Why are you guys together? Like, okay, mm -hmm. I just need to get away from this person. Well, can't you just get in your car and get away? But, okay. but uh, you know, I don't know. Just those little key pieces in the movie just kind of like un like this. This just didn't work. So I guess that I would go back to you know the editing or whatever they tell. Uh, Tor will tell you the actual terminology of what that is uh, uh, in the comment yeah. section on what that would be. But other than that, um. The marketing, like like Tori said, was was pretty bad. I had no idea about this movie. Even when Rashad or Tori told me, about it, I was like, Ken, what is it? I don't see anything about this movie. So, mm -hmm. you know, they missed out. And seeing my boy Michael B, but not having a, you know, more than two minutes, like, he should have did a little bit more. <laughs> Showed up at the beginning <laughs> of the movie, and then, you know, don't show up back into the end or something. To get everybody, you know, focus on coming to watch it. I think this should. I think there will be a can too. I don't know if it'll be in theaters. I think it may, maybe one of the sh the streaming shows to pick it up, like Hulu or you know uh, Netflix or something. So I think that that may that it may go down that that out. But the next one does like it could be dope with all the different, um, you know, fighting and sci-fi and everything. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I think I, those are kind of the key reasons it failed. In my eye, and only made three million. Uh, what about you, Rashad? <laughs> all right, a uh, couple things. First of all, Elijah, he's a little on the naive side. You know what I mean? Like he acts like a nine-year-old, not a fourteen or fifteen-year-old. Okay, like okay, here's the deal. All right, your brother that you haven't seen in six years, number one, comes back from prison, not from camp, not from the military. He comes <laughs> back from prison, number two. Your dad says, don't hang around him. Don't spend time around him. All right? So there's a reason why your dad says that. Number four, your dad takes you to a work site, right? Then all of a sudden, your brother comes out, and he's running, and then he takes the car and drives off, and he's like, oh, yeah, there's an emergency. Dad will call us. Okay. Four. And then five, you never talk to your dad again? <laughs> And this, and this is just okay. Like, I would have been like, hold up, may, maybe, maybe I would have been naive enough to go that first day, okay? Mm -hmm. But you mean to tell me that my dad, the only parent I have, only, I don't have a mom, just, just my dad, and I talk to him every single day, and I'm not going to talk to my dad at all. He's not going to call me. He's not going to. I'm not going to see him. We're just, going, we're just randomly going on a trip someplace. Come on, bro, Elijah. Come on, man. Do better. <laughs> anyway, uh, Jack Rayner's character. By the way, if you guys didn't know. Oh, by the way, um, uh, Miles Truitt. Uh, Danny, if you've seen the new edition movie, he actually was Ronnie DeVoe. Oh, I didn't the know movie. he was Ronnie in there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But uh, Jack Rayner's character, who if you guys also didn't know, he was actually the boyfriend in Transformers 4. You know, the one where he hit a guy with his <laughs> he hit a guy with his entire car. Yeah. <laughs> the wheel of his car it was flying through the air. Yeah, that boyfriend. Oh. I really thought that Miles Truitt did a good job with his character, Elijah. And I thought James Frankel did a good job with his character. So what was missing 
was Jack Rayner's character. Like, because Miles Truitt was so young, um, it it kind of held him back from some of the things that he could do. But I felt that he 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 did everything that he could do. But Jack Rayner, his character just it wasn't enough. Like this movie, okay, it's either going to be an action movie or it's going to be an intense drama if you want to draw me in. And if it wasn't going to be action, I needed more drama. And I needed Jack Rayner to do more. I needed to feel his pain, to feel his conflict. Like you said, Charlie, his dad just died. And not only did his dad, dad just die, but he had something to do with it. Mm-hmm. And that you just don't spend time like you should see more scenes with him driving and having a good time with his brother, and then just flash into his face and he was smiling, and then just kind of, you know, what I mean, just mm-hmm. having that have, have that facial expression change or something. We just didn't get enough of of really getting into the uh, to the heart of his character, and so I just don't. I think for me, he was a big failure as far as this movie was concerned. He just should have done more. Plus. He might have done a better job of explaining the whole life death situation to his dad. It's like, yeah, these guys owe me some money. I need sixty thousand dollars, Dad. They are going. Listen to me. Listen to the words I'm saying. I'm <laughs> going to die. be dead, right? And you do. <laughs> Get out! No, Dad, I can't leave. You need to understand this. <laughs> They're going if to kill us. Job explaining that, maybe things would have gone differently. Um, Pacing was exceptionally poor. This movie is like a valley. Like the beginning was interesting and the ending was interesting and the middle was just low. It was just, it just the ending, the middle sucked. The whole strip club scene was just unnecessary. I mean, it was just a way to meet Molly. Yeah. And it was, it was just unnecessary, you know. And I got one more thing. I got a, that don't make no sense moment and I'm going to be done. I got to get my prop. I got one too. If if you don't say it, I got one also that I just thought of. That'll make no sense. This part made me angry. Okay. At the scene where they were at the dinner table, the son's like, I got to go, right? I'm just going to go. And he left a whole glass of milk. <laughs> a whole glass of milk. Boy, you better sit your butt back down here. <laughs> Do you know how much milk costs? The milk ain't free in this house. I don't. It might be free in the prison, but you better get back over here and drink this milk. You know what I'm saying? I mean, a whole glass of milk. Come on, bro. Come on, man. Nah, uh-uh. The milk is nah. what got you a shot. The milk, the milk, Rashad. That milk ain't cheap, bro. Ain't like you left some Kool Aid, uh, like a whole glass of Kool Aid. You left a whole glass of milk. Bro, y'all, y'all dads, y'all know. Come on now, one of y'all kids just got up and left a whole glass of milk. Y'all be still be fussing right now. No, probably, <laughs> you're probably right. You're actually probably right. I'm like, what the heck? Who the up? Depends on it depends on what it is. Depends on what it is. If, if I wanted to drink it, I would be upset. But if it was something that I just bought them, okay, throw it away. <laughs> you won't get no more. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least say that you. Hey, hey, you come back here next time you come in this house. I bet you won't get no more milk. <laughs> wow. Hey, but look, and then Michael B. Jordan, Michael B. Jordan should have showed up at the end with the milk. <laughs> <laughs> I got this from your house. <laughs> he showed up like, hey, you you gonna finish this milk or right? <laughs> <laughs> we don't have this where I come from, <laughs> right? I'm sorry, I'm over time. Go ahead, Daddy. Crucial. Oh, my, my, that didn't make no sense moment. How about why did they need to drive all the way? Like, if they have technology that they can like travel instantaneously between planets and worlds, why did they need to drive? Like, why did they do all of that driving to hunt them down if they could have just like opened up a doorway and stepped through it and came to another place? That's dumb, but. Yeah, I guess I, I didn't guess think we'll about have, that. We'll have to wait. We'll have to wait for Ken one and a half. Um, <laughs> it's gonna be a YouTube production. Yeah, it'll be on YouTube Red. Or maybe there you we'll go. Get, it's on you, YouTube Red. Maybe, Red. <laughs> maybe we'll get. Maybe we'll get a comic book, or we might get a comic book. You know, he's getting into comic books, so uh, we might get a comic book, or maybe like an animation or something. Who knows? But I don't think we'll get nothing. <laughs> well, Danny, should um should people see this movie and also your clothes spiel? Uh yeah. I'd say people should go see it just so that we can get a kin too. The only reason 
the the absolute <laughs> only reason to go see this movie right now is to help them uh, find a reason to make the second movie. Other than that, you should. This is a movie that you can watch on Netflix, on your phone, or anywhere. It's not it's not spectacular, um, but I would encourage people to go see it because I would like to see the second one. Um, but that's all for me. Uh, what are we doing next week? Peppermint? We're, we're doing peppermint, peppermint next week. Peppermint. Yeah. Uh, what did you call it, girl, uh, Chuck? But girl Punisher. We're doing a yeah, Girl Punisher movie next uh, <laughs> next week, Peppermint. I think that one that one will be better than this one, though. Is. So um, that's it for me, y'all. Uh, uh, we're we're going to be at Greensboro Comic Con uh, next weekend, September 15th and 16th. Uh, Greensboro, North Carolina. You will be able to get Ace Blade Comics and Lumberjacks Comics. And um, some special stuff. We got some T-shirts too that we just that we just got. So um, until then, y'all uh, stay vigilant, my friends. I'm out. Chuck, I think yeah, I think um, like Tori said, go check it out so we can see if we can get a sequel maybe. <laughs> but other than that, no, it's not that big a deal. It's uh, it was all right. It was all right. It was a good watch, I guess, for parts of it. But uh, you know, like I said, you can watch on Netflix. It seems like it's a Netflix type of movie, so um, you know maybe you get like some dollar theater type tickets. You know maybe it'll sell big there. I wouldn't look to pay no eight to ten, twelve dollars to go watch it. You might be upset, but uh, yeah, that, that's about it. That's about it for me. But uh, no, like you say, KFH party easy. We're out. Um, not not anything going on right yet, but we do got some things coming down the pipe. So just stay tuned. The announcements shortly. I know Danny is the contrarian, but uh, I'm gonna have to say I'm in 100% agreement with him. As soon as he, as soon as he said that, it's like you know what? You know how you feel a certain way, and then somebody else says something, and you're like, no, I feel like that. That's how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> yes, people should see this movie so we can get akin to. Absolutely, that's the main reason. Because other than that, it would be a C for yourself. Honestly, if they just had cut a good thirty minutes out of this movie, it would have been a better movie. If it just, or somebody said it probably would have been a decent TV show. Like, yeah, probably so. But as a, as an hour and a half or longer movie, mm -mm, kind of fails. But yeah, go watch it so we can see Ken too, which will probably be better. All right, well, that's been our show. As usual, go down to the comments. And answer some of those questions that Charlie was asking there, because I don't know the answers to them myself. <laughs> tell us how uh, you were, we were right or how you were wrong. Yeah, tell us how you were wrong. Be brave enough to go in the comments and tell us how you were wrong. Also, make a uh, take a look at the description as well, so you can see links to other playlists that we've done, because we've got some incredible movies for you guys. Look at some of the recent movies we've done, like uh, The Meg. Uh, we got Mile 22 coming out real soon, Death of Superman, Equalizer 2, Mission Impossible, all kinds of things. Plus, go back to the beginning of the year and you'll see good movies. <laughs> <laughs> Mission Impossible was great, by the way. <laughs> and uh, thanks again for watching our show. And make sure that you, what do you got to do, Danny? Subscribe to survive. <laughs> As usual, this is Color Commentary, where we give you views. I don't, I, I don't really have anything for this movie. It's just we just got views. It's not even from a different side. We just, it's just views. Peace. And it's gotta be. This movie doesn't deserve a uh, end credit. No, it doesn't really deserve one. And it's gotta be.